Hello, everybody, and happy Thursday. Welcome back to a special segment of Spotlight on Corruption. I don't know who came up with that, but that's good. Check out our new YouTube channel, which will keep corruption in the spotlight such as it exists. Today, I want to talk about another little example of, uh, you know, some of the things that are going on that uh, probably deserve, uh, you know, public uh, uh, attention. Again, these things affect way more than my case, but... We're going to give you some examples of, uh, you know, just some stuff that is pulled from the other room. Now, today's segment is about findings of fact. This has been an interesting kind of thing. So, for those of you not well versed in the law, there's, you know, again, what is the practice of law? It is the application of fact to the controlling law. Who the hell cares what every, you know, what you think, what you think, what you think? Doesn't matter. That's the whole purpose. We put a black robe on. I mean, I think the answer should be this. I think the law should be this. Doesn't matter. Your job is to apply facts to law. So that is why uh, people don't matter. That's what the rule of law is. We're all doing a job. We're like, you know, the judge is like a washing machine. You know, uh, it's open the book. Okay, that's the law. Take the facts and do it. So findings of fact uh, in orders are those which are the facts that are found by the court. And uh, you apply those to the controlling law. Uh, and, uh, and that generates the result, you know, um, or at least it's supposed to be that way. Now, the law is, uh, you know, uh, uh, should be fairly uh, straightforward. Sometimes it's, it's not as straightforward. So the facts that are found by the court take on, um, you know, significance. Now, um, you, you really only need to find as many facts as uh, you need to, 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 to apply to the law, right? So one of the things that's fascinating about my case is, is that you know you've got 20 page opinions 16 page opinions um, and uh, so those are written not by the judge those are written by um, you know staffers and uh, down in the Kenton family court uh, you know miss Alice Keys now she's the one who has the uh, relationship with miss Stephanie Deeds and it is through the two of them that the uh, corruption is accomplished um, just to not lose the forest for the trees so we have outside actor who makes money by generating conflict and creating court business uh, and who then has a special hookup at the court who gives her special access to justice and special justice so that she can cash in. Cha-ching. The fact that in this space there are statutes that actually allow, legally, this is not something that normally happens, the court uh, to reassign the attorney's fees in the case um, provides quite a, uh, an opportunity for a payday on some of this. And so, you know, here we are. It's about uh, money, money, money. Making money for attorneys off the backs of parents and kids who uh, pay the price uh, and who are damaged forever. Uh, and uh, breaking up uh, parents and destroying relationships that were manageable and perfectly fine, if not great, at the time the lawyers came in. So that's what we got going on here, and that's really kind of the bigger picture. But findings of fact. Now, findings of fact. So... You know, the reason that you, I mean, there's, there are facts that are controverted, right? So um, you know, here's like what you would expect. Okay, uh, there's a dispute, it's a factual dispute. Uh, this person says that the light was green. This person said that the light was red. Can't be both. So the court has to listen to those witnesses, look at the evidence. Maybe there's some videotape of it, whatever. But I find that the light was red. And in the family court, it's not like a jury, right? Like, so... So a jury typically finds the facts, like so in my criminal cases, right? In a, in a case that I have, a jury trial, <clears throat> which is pretty much all my stuff. Um, you know, the jury finds the facts. The judge handles the law. The judge tells the jury, here's the law. Uh, you guys find the facts, apply the facts to the law, and reach your verdict, reach your conclusion, reach your judgment, whatever. In the family court, the judge does both those things. The judge is the finder of fact as well. So the judge writes the findings of fact. And by the judge, I mean his staff. I mean Alice Keys. So um, one of the very interesting things about the findings of fact in my cases and, and down there is that, uh, yeah, they're, 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 they're straight up cray cray. Like we're not, it's not like this person said this, this person said that, and we find that this person's right. No, it's just 16 or 20 pages of, of basically an objectively totally inaccurate version of the facts and any reader, literally every reader uh, who's a part of the trial, including the witnesses, um, once they read the court's version, Ms. Key's version of their testimony, they are like, whoa, 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 I, that's not what I said. 
that's not what that was. And this is very easily established, right? All you have to do is go to the videotape. They videotape these proceedings. And you're like, okay, you see a witness saying like, um, on this day, I went to Johnny's house and I played with uh, little Johnny and, uh, you know, with his toys and we had a nice visit. And that was the testimony. Not even controverted, okay? And then you go and you read the findings of fact from the court generated by, written by Ms. Keyes, about which the judge has no idea, okay, to this moment. I am convinced he has no idea. He would never write these things. He's a good and decent man. And the version of that would be... <clears throat> uh, the petitioner went to Johnny's house and gave him uh, bad food and uh, dangerous knives to play with, and uh, you know he cut himself, and uh, it was like barely a life-threatening experience, and he escaped by the. You're like, wait, nobody even said that, dude. It's like this. The experience that I have is like it's like watching, you know, Saving Private Ryan, okay, and then the movie. And then picking up a, a, a screenplay of that movie and, and it being like Aladdin. You know? And you're like, wait, what? Uh, that's, that's not. Nobody. Okay. Um, and so, what makes this very interesting, and we do a, a, a statistical breakdown of this. We've got a whole like whippersnapper team here, the millennial uh, section of the firm. Um, they objectively break down all of the finding facts in the case. Once we figured out this was completely whack, this is crazy shizzle, okay? You, like, it really makes you think, am I on, like, LSD right now? Because that is not what was said. And you go to the videotape, and it's like, nope, right? So you can take a court order and, like, 20 pages of findings of fact or 16 pages or whatever it is, go into the conference room like the millennials do, pull it up on the video screen, and, uh, you know, watch it and be like, nope, that's not right, okay. And they have some kind of analytical like formula, like a, like a, like an objective measurement of like, you know, that grades out on a scale of like zero to one hundred percent incorrect. Um, each of the court's orders are in terms of their findings of fact, and they've taken to making these wonderful charts and citing specifically to the date, the timestamp. Part of that is for like we appeal all this stuff, um, so it's for the appellate court because obviously the court of appeals you know corrects these things. Um, but it's also become, a, 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 you know, a useful tool in identifying uh, the corruption that's going on. Um, look, you know, uh, honestly, this stuff is so wrong that it's hard to believe anybody would be this wrong one time. It's that far off. But to be that far off over the course of 35 or 40 court orders, two separate litigations over two years, and to have the statistics now put together by the whippersnapper group, um, and to see those, I mean... Okay, uh, you know, no, 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 no. And, 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 and you know, it, it, um, it's very compelling. But one example of this that I wanted to, so that's, that's just, you know, kind of looking at like my testimony or somebody else's testimony. So one of the most remarkable kind of things here is that uh, in one of my cases, we have a, uh, a court appointed, okay, neutral, um, expert, you know, kid counselor. I didn't know who he was. The other side may or may not have. They actually suggested the person. We agreed. This person is not affiliated with any party, okay? And he's there to serve the court. And he has a very clear mandated court mission. And it's his job to weigh in on some things as a kid expert, right? So we have some proceedings, and he testified. And after the first time he testified, the court issued an order in June of this year. All this stuff is a public record, so if anybody wanted to, you know, disprove me, everything that I'm saying is verifiable, and if it's incorrect, somebody should point that out, and, uh, you know, that's that's a contribution. It's not incorrect, okay? Um, but a court order was issued, and uh, uh, it, as it turned out, uh, you know, um, again, it was, it was a mystifying thing, because now this is happening to his testimony. It's one thing for Ms. Keys at the court to, like, you know, completely butcher what I say and what all the other evidence is uh, for Ms. Dietz in securing the special justice for Ms. Dietz's clients. <clears throat> That's one thing. But in order to, I mean, like we're butchering the testimony, the, the, the findings of fact describing the testimony of a court appointed neutral, which happened to be favorable to me. But in the order, you would think that like this person said all this stuff. Well. You know, as it turned out, uh, this person uh, wrote a letter to the court. He was so disturbed by what, how he saw the court describe, how Ms. Keys described his testimony, 
So he wrote a court on a letter to the court on uh, June 25th, 2021, the Honorable Christopher J. Maley, <laughs> uh, regarding requests to amend the findings of fact. And he wrote, I am writing to respectfully request that the court amend specific findings of fact in its order dated June 18th, 2021. That's the date of the order. And there's two in particular. Uh, I think there was only two that applied to him, uh, and he takes exception to them, them both. The first was finding of fact nine, which he calls, uh, and I quote, blatantly erroneous. Okay. And, uh, and then finding of fact 13. I don't know what uh, was wrong there. It doesn't really matter. But he concludes with, thank you for your consideration with respect to modifying the above findings of fact. Now, guys, <clears throat> I've been a lawyer for 20 years as a federal prosecutor for five, and I've seen some stuff, guys. I've seen some stuff. Um, I've never seen findings of fact like those written by Miss Keys for misdeeds or her friends in these litigations um, to corruptly give them the justice that uh, they've arranged for, for whatever reason. But these things are off, and it's not hard to prove. Again, the nefariousness is matched only by the stupidity in that all you have to do is plug in the freaking video and say, like, okay, the witness didn't say that. Well, here we have a court, a, we have a witness coming in the court, testify. The court <clears throat> listening. Uh, and then making findings based upon that testimony and having the witness come back to the court, write the judge and say, that's not at all what I said. What you wrote was blatantly erroneous. Can you fix it? Now, two major things here that are remarkable. One, the fact that that would ever happen. Guys, it's da -da 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 okay. If that is ever happening, and by the way, we're not talking about a witness for me, a witness for the other side. We're talking about a court neutral, a court appointed witness. So there's a t-shirt somewhere that says like, how do you know that things are really boobar in your court? And, and, and that's on the front on the back is like when the court appointed neutral has to write a letter to the court saying like, that's not at all what I said. It's blatantly erroneous. What are you thinking? Okay. If that happens, everybody should stop and we should be like, okay, we got like something's going on here, but that's not actually the most remarkable part. And you always have to wait for it, right? Because just when you think it's like maximally corrupt, eh, it's only a prelude to the real thing. And here, here's, um, you know, Ms. Keys arranged it such that the court said, no, no, not going to amend that. Thank you for letting us know that we butchered what uh, your testimony was and like completely mischaracterized it in our order. Um, applying it to law, generating the result. Um, <clears throat> thanks for noting that. Uh, but we're going to go with the blatantly erroneous version that completely mischaracterizes your stuff. Okay. What, 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 are we like, are we a la la land? So, um, you know, the findings of fact in this case are, uh, you know, are written by Ms. Keys um, and, you know, for Ms. Dietz and, and, and uh, her clingers on at the moment. Uh, and, and, and uh, you know, um, and, and just the wholesale fiction. They are uh, the screenplay to Aladdin after you watch the movie to Saving Private Ryan. And that's a big part of the corruption here. So that's today's lesson and today's example of our spotlight on corruption ongoing in the family court. Happy Thursday. I'm having fun. This is fun. I'm having fun. <laughs>